let's run B360. Last week I finally got my Steam Deck and I wanted to share my first impressions with you. Because maybe you're also looking forward to get your own Steam Deck or maybe you're not quite sure if you should get it. Because there are so many consoles and handhelds on the market or because you're not that into tinkering. Or maybe you don't even know what a Steam Deck is. Whatever the reason is, I think you will get quite excited about this one. But before we jump in, I'm trying to grow this channel to 1000 subscribers. So if you could subscribe to the channel, that would be great. Now let's begin. The Steam Deck is a handheld from the company Valve, which is known for developing and publishing video games, but also for its digital distribution. They also made some hardware before, but this time around with the Steam Deck, they are stepping into the handheld market. Maybe you would think, that's great, but why would I want the Steam Deck? Because I already own a Nintendo Switch, or an Xbox, or Playstation. While I think the main reason would be, because this is not just a handheld, as it's more of a handheld PC. And the difference is, that besides being able to play the games on this handheld, you get a lot more versatility and a lot more power than you're used to. For example, you can play your Steam games library on it, which you can download directly to your Steam Deck, but you're also able to play almost any console you would want through emulation, like Super Nintendo, PlayStation 3, or even Nintendo Switch games. And besides that, you're even able to play Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5 games on it. When you think of it, it's absolutely fantastic, especially when the TV is occupied or you want to play these games when you're in bed. Just keep in mind, as the Steam Deck is a handheld PC, it's not all plug and play, as you might need to tinker a bit to get it working. But when it works, it's fantastic. For me as a console gamer, who's just used to start a game and don't think about anything else, I thought it would be difficult to get the Steam Deck up and running. But after taking some time, I got it all working and can share it with you. I won't get into details on how to set that up today, but if you're interested in that, just make sure you subscribe and set up notifications so you won't miss those videos. So in short, you can have any console you would want in the palms of your hands. Speaking of, how does it feel in your hands? Well, the Steam Deck is a lot bigger than a Nintendo Switch. On its side, it's even almost as big as an Xbox Series X, and it's heavier than you might be used to. Because it's bulkier, it also feels really good in your hands. Personally, I would say it feels a lot better than a Nintendo Switch. The buttons overall are also great. Besides having a D-pad and analog sticks, you also get these trackpads, which you can use as your mouse, which can be great for aiming as well, and have a great tactile feel to them. You can also use them for the desktop mode, but we will get into that later in this video. There is also a gyro functionality on it, like on the Nintendo Switch, but personally, I haven't used it yet. The analog sticks work fine and have a nice spring to them, but the top feels a bit slippery. It's not a big issue, but I thought I would just mention it. The D-pad works, but could have been a bit better, as I would say it's a bit small. But if you want to have a proper D-pad of your choice, you can always hook up your favorite controller through Bluetooth, so you won't have a big issue with that. You can even hook up a keyboard and mouse or an arcade stick. The back buttons on the other hand feel fantastic, especially the L2 and R2 which have a satisfying travel to them. Also the touchscreen works great and is everything you would want from it, because sometimes it makes navigating the menus a lot easier. The screen resolution is 720p, which doesn't seem much, but works great on a screen this size. You could compare it with the original Nintendo Switch screen. The back buttons are also fine and well placed, but personally I haven't used them a lot yet. Furthermore you have the Steam button, which acts like some sort of a menu button. And this button right here brings up an extra menu, which you can use to change the settings of your games on the fly. And that is a thing that some might like, but others don't. As you can play almost any game if you tweak the settings enough. But sometimes it can go at the cost of frame rate or the resolution. To make it easier for you to know which games it will run, Valve has made a list to show you which games work great on Steam Deck. You can easily see this in the Steam Store through these signs. And by the way, the list of supported games is growing weekly. So it's cool that you can play pretty new games and even AAA games on the Steam Deck. 
But the con here is that the more demanding the games are, the more it kills the battery, which is a lot lower than on the Nintendo Switch. On very demanding games, it could be about 90 minutes, which is just not enough. You could always change the settings to a lower resolution, frame rate, or plug in a power bank, which helps a bit, but I think this is the Achilles heel of the Steam Deck. Hopefully this can be improved in the future with updates, or maybe even on the Steam Deck too. Who knows? One cool thing is that if you stream a game through your PlayStation 5, the PlayStation 5 does the heavy lifting, so you can get about 5 to 6 hours of gaming out of your Steam Deck. Same goes for lower demanding games, or streaming games through Xbox X Cloud. In my opinion, streaming normally isn't perfect, but on the Steam Deck it's getting close. It works so fluently that most of the time you don't even have the feeling you are streaming a game. So what about games you install? The big demanding games can take up some space. That means you need to have enough storage space. So Valve has made three versions of the Steam Deck to tackle this. Mostly they are the same, as they all come with a travel case, a charger and a cleaning cloth. But with the bigger versions, you also get some digital stuff, as you can see here. And the 256 and 512 gigabyte versions have a faster storage, which could give you faster loading times on games. Furthermore, the 512 gigabyte version also has an anti-glare screen, which is fantastic in my opinion. So I got the 512 gigabyte version, which is the fastest storage space and gives me the flexibility to have a lot of games installed. But if you don't want to pay that much money, you can also insert an SD card easily to increase your storage size. But I didn't need that yet. But it's still great to have that option. Another option would be to buy the 64GB Steam Deck and replace the internal storage yourself. The reason for the big storage could also be handy because you can use the Steam Deck as a desktop PC. Because if you press the Steam button and go to power, you can go to desktop mode which is very impressive to say the least. Some people even have Windows installed on it. In a desktop environment, you can do anything you like on a desktop or laptop. For example, install applications, work on documents, install and play games, or watch movies. Sounds good, right? Well, speaking of sound, the speakers on the Steam Deck sound surprisingly good. Just check it out for a second. For me, this sounds a lot better than on the Nintendo Switch. Another thing on the Steam Deck is that you can connect it to your monitor if it has a USB-C connection. I will leave a link in the description to this monitor if you want to get it. But you could also use a USB-C to HDMI hub. You can even connect it wirelessly if your TV supports Steam Link. But personally, I think this doesn't work well enough, as there is just too much of a delay in it. When you connect it to your TV or monitor through a cable, it works pretty good, but depending on the game. You can imagine with all these features you get with the Steam Deck, it is in hot demand. So if you want to get one yourself, you need to put up a reservation on Steam's website. I will leave a link for you in the description. Speaking of hot, the backside of the Steam Deck can get a bit warm at times, but you will never feel it by the way your hands are placed. Also to cool the Steam Deck down, Valve made a fan at the top of the Steam Deck. At launch there were reports that the fan could get loud on demanding games. But with the updates the Steam Deck got, it is barely noticeable. Overall the first impressions on the Steam Deck are better than I expected. As a console gamer, I have the ease of use to play almost any game I want. But if you're more of a PC gamer or like to tinker a lot, Valve also gives you the flexibility with the Steam Deck and it will only be improved even more over time. Over the coming weeks, I will still make videos about the Xbox Series X, the PlayStation 5, tech products and so on. But I will also test out stuff on the Steam Deck and share it with you guys. So if there is something you want to see on the Steam Deck, let me know in the comments and we'll try to figure it out. Just make sure to subscribe so you won't miss it. And in the meanwhile, click here to watch the next video. See you there.